Hello, this is Zehul Alum. Welcome you on Frankly Speaking. My guest today is Michael McGraw. He is the Interim Regional Director, South and Central Asia of Save the Children International. He is a development professional with more than 20 years of experience in Asia, the Middle East, Africa and the Pacific. Michael McGraw has worked as Country Director for the Save the Children in Armenia, Central Asia, Pakistan, Malawi and also in Bangladesh. He has been based in Dhaka since early 2011. His professional background is in natural resource management, but he has been responsible for managing or overseeing programs and projects in livelihoods, health, education, HIV and AIDS, and children's rights in both development and emergency context. Michael McGraw is an Australian, and we welcome Michael McGraw on Frankly Speaking. Thanks for joining me on Frankly Speaking. Thank you very much, Zahir. Pleased to be here. Uh, Michael, uh, you were in Dhaka and on 14 February, uh, in presence of Prime Minister, uh, you have launched, I mean, uh, jointly launched Government Brack and Save the Children International uh, digital media program. So, um, before, I mean, uh, let's start our conversations with that program. Why, I mean, what is the purpose of launching such a program, digital media com program? Sure, thank you very much, Zahir. It's one of the programs we're most pleased about. Uh, first of all, because it's reaching vast numbers of children. More than a million primary school children in Bangladesh will be reached by this program. It's being done in partnership with the government of Bangladesh, and it's introducing, under the, the Prime Minister's vision of digital Bangladesh, a whole new way of teaching children, a much more exciting, interactive way. You know, the old way you used to have a teacher who would stand up at the board and, and the children would chant, and a lot of that information just didn't go in. Now the kids are excited, they're really focused on learning, and we, we're very proud to be associated with it. The, the means, new means of learning or teaching That's right. is that definitely it's new in Bangladesh. But, um, I mean, uh, can you share the global experience uh, regarding the digital media program? Sure. I mean, that's one of the advantages of an organisation like Save the Children. We can bring global learning to Bangladesh. Uh, you know, in countries like in Western Europe or America or Australia, it's the normal way. Uh, children are working in IT-enabled classrooms where they can immediately interact, they can create content, and, you know, they say you, you, remit, you learn 1% of what you hear, but 99% of what you do. So this is, what, this is what's actually happening. Children with access to this can actually interact. They can send information, get a res uh, response back from the teacher and quickly uh, sort of take on this new knowledge. So what led you uh, to think about it for Bangladesh, introduce it for Bangladesh? Well, I think Bangladesh is transitioning. It's becoming uh, a middle income country and the old ways of doing things really are, are no longer effective and no longer necessary. The government has a vision of digital Bangladesh where Already everybody has a mobile phone, many people have smartphones and increasing the, this internet access. So this is a perfect opportunity to introduce a new approach. Right now is the right time. Already 1,500 schools have been equipped with these um, digital media enabled classrooms and the objective eventually is to reach all 108,000 primary schools throughout Bangladesh. Some of the recent uh, brutalities, some of the very cruel incidents uh, and the abuse of child's rights in Bangladesh. So how uh, the Save the Children International is dealing with all these uh, incidents in Bangladesh? Well, first of all, we're trying to get uh, a change in the way people think about children. Bangladesh was one of the first signatories yeah. in the world of the Child Rights Convention, mm -hmm. which guarantees rights for children. Okay. But making that a reality is yeah. tough. You know, resources that are available to the government are not very great at district level. Parents and the broader community has to take responsibility. People have to step up and act okay. and not stand by when violence, terrible violence, is perpetrated against children. Yeah. Um, the, the case of Rajan and Rakib last year, the recent one with Jahid in Rajshahi. And Imam. Yeah, and Imam, yes. Uh, the, what is unacceptable is that sometimes people stand by and allow this to happen. And we all have to say in our hearts, no, we will not tolerate violence against children. Um, 
and a, a particularly bad example of violence against children is early marriage. Um, Bangladesh still has one of the highest rates of early marriage of children in the world. Half of our children are married by the age of 15, half of our girls. And uh, we are actively working to stop that. Uh, Michael, to understand the, I mean, brutality, rising brutality against the uh, children in Bangladesh, um, let's, I mean, um, uh, look at our editorial, an editorial mm -hmm. uh, by an English daily. Uh, they uh, wrote about the incidents, recent incidents, and uh, to depict the picture. Um, the barbaric treatment of children, the most vulnerable group in society, has become a dangerous trend these days. The horrific beating of two young boys for being suspected of stealing a mobile phone uh, attests to this. The terrifying murders of Rajun and Raki, both children mercilessly tortured to death by grown-ups, mm -hmm. continue to haunt us. Uh, they're saying this. And the fact that two of the assault, uh, assaulters of this case, I mean the recent case yes. in Rajshahi, were members of security and law enforcement agencies makes this all the more reprehensible for if the protectors of law become ruthless, torturous of children, what hope have we that this malice will be eliminated? So, I mean, uh, you are working to protect and promote mm -hmm. the rights of children, but um, there is no uh, recession of this incidence in Bangladesh. So, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, are, are you gravely concerned that um, the despite of having all the efforts put in forward by the government, policy makers, or the law enforcing agencies, international organization, still the brutality is, is gravely rising in yes. Bangladesh? Yes, I am seriously concerned. Uh, at the time of the killings of uh, Rakib and Rajan last year, I called on the government of Bangladesh to, at the very highest level, declare that violence against children was unacceptable and to put in measures, put in place measures to get the police to actively go out and seek cases where children had been mis mistreated and to proactively punish those people. It hasn't really happened yet. Okay. Um, I think what needs to happen is not just pronouncements, but we need to actually put in place policies, procedures and practices so that uh, People feel happy, feel, feel free to report incidents, that they trust the police and that the police then actively investigate these things. That's what needs to happen. And uh, it, it's not really enough to say there's a few bad Does apples. Does it help the media reports? The media reports help a lot. It's hugely important because it raises the profile of the mm -hmm. issue. Then it's up to the government to act. But some people argue that uh, the media reports are counterproductive. No, I, I wouldn't agree with that. Uh, I think that if there, you, sh you don't shoot the messenger. If there is a problem, it's the media's responsibility to report it, and then it's the government's uh, responsibility to identify a solution. Okay. But the media is uh, acting highly responsibly in this matter. Michael Magra, uh, why do you think the ordinary people are doing these horrible things? I mean, the why the trend that uh, people uh, are getting so brutal, uh, so uh, uh, unkind, so uh, barbaric towards the children. Why this is happening in Bangladesh? It's a very tough question, but I think part of it is a feeling of impunity, a feeling that people will get away with things. Uh, you know, that terrible case um, before with uh, Rakib, I think it was, where somebody uploaded onto Facebook a video of the murder and then one of the perpetrators escaped to Saudi Arabia, which yeah. has no extradition treaty. Yeah. So he was sure that he w his connections would protect him. People have to be sure that their connections won't protect them. They have to know there is no escape. Okay. 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 Um, could you please shed some light on other challenges um, um, on the child issues? Yes. I mean... Uh, Another crucial issue is nutrition. It's not quite as sort of high profile perhaps, but uh, about 35% of children in Bangladesh are malnourished. They get food, but it's not the right type of food. And as a result, they are underweight. And as a result, their brain development is less. Okay. Now, Bangladesh can't afford this. Our wealth is our people. Okay. And if children are 
it, that there's a significant impact on gross national product, on economic growth as a result of this. So we need actively to um, start uh, to more effectively combat malnutrition. Save the Children is just starting a new six-year project in Silet, which mm -hmm. is one of the worst hit areas. But you have to deal with the underlying causes, and the underlying causes particularly include early giving birth too early. If children give birth, they don't know how to care for children. Children should not be mothers. When, when you grow up, you learn how to care for children, you learn how to feed them effectively. So that's a crucial factor. So um, along with the Inter Save the Children International, what are the, um, I mean, the, the level or degree of um, assistance to Bangladesh to um, getting over the uh, malnutrition pro um, problem in Bangladesh, is that adequate? I mean, the amount of programs or supports or assistance we are receiving from the international community? Uh, I think that this is a very well-funded program. It's uh, uh, supported by the British government and the EU. Uh, we are working with eight government ministries over a period of six years in two mm. districts in northern Bangladesh. Okay. Uh, and I think it will be very successful. It's going to establish a model for how the government can roll out effective treatment of nutrition throughout the country. Mm -hmm. But it is at an early stage. Um, we're only just starting last year and there are, in fact, 64 districts in Bangladesh and working in two is not enough. Child marriage is an issue of critical interest in Bangladesh. Do you work on this? Yes, we certainly do. Uh, unfortunately, the incidence of marriage of girls is very high. Uh, it's, uh, the average age of marriage is 15.6 years. It's the fourth highest rate in the world, up there with Chad and Niger. And Save the Children's been working for quite a while, uh, together with local government and the national government. Actually, next, uh, on the 27th of February, we have a major event in Mehrapur district okay. at which the cabinet secretary will be present declaring Mehrapur a child marriage free district. Okay. And this is the culmination of many years of work, working with civil surgeons, working with school directors, with the deputy commissioner and his staff to try and eliminate the scourge of child marriage. Child marriage is the worst form of child abuse. It's taking a little girl, a child, and pushing her into adult life far too early. She gets out of school, she raises a child when she's not ready for it, it damages her health, it damages the child's health. It's a terrible thing and Bangladesh needs really to actively address this problem. So this is a, this is a problem uh, which is um, uh, alarmingly rising in your view right now in Bangladesh? No, actually I would say that uh, it's declining but very, very slowly. Okay. Uh, but it's still extraordinarily high. Um, and as I said, it's the fourth highest in the world. And it's, it's stubborn. You know, it's coming down just, just little, little by little every year. Okay. Uh, the, actually, one of the important things that's addressing it is the increasing participation of women in the garment industry because they can see there's a job for themselves. And that is another way of dealing with the issue of child marriage. If we can get good education and good jobs for young women, that will delay marriage. So, uh, I, mean the, um, I mean, the reasons behind uh, child marriage is the lack of awareness only, or enforcement, or w what are the other things uh, in your view I think can contribute? In this? Th there are a lot of different issues, and you've rightly identified this is quite a complex issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I think probably the most important thing is the lack of alternative opportunities for girls. Okay. And naturally, if you're a father in a small village and your daughter has dropped out of school, there's no job the for sense her. of insecurity is a big problem. Exactly. Hmm. And, and girls do get harassed on occasion and fathers are worried about their, their daughter's honour and so on. So if we can get good education and jobs for girls, then they will, their fathers will say, no, let's, let's leave them there. But also, I think, Increased enforcement by government is important. Uh, we, we need to work uh, with the marriage registrars. We need to work with marriage brokers and government officials and the police. Well, Michael, um, how effectively the Save the Children International looking at the uh, child labor issue uh, to data child level in the countries like Bangladesh? Because this is also one of the areas where uh, people are gravely concerned about the child, I mean, the abuse of child in many front of life. Yes, certainly Zahir, the uh, 
Bangladesh has effectively addressed the issue of child labour in the formal sector, but that's only just a tiny part of the, the national Like in economy. Redmond Garman. Exactly. But in the, the Category A factories, maybe yes. But uh, most employment is in B and C factories yeah. and in very informal workshops. True. In the leather industry, in the brick making industry, in the jewellery industry, uh, there is extensive employment of children. Yeah. And the, the causes are poverty in general uh, and lack of enforcement uh, by um, the appropriate authorities. Save the Children has been working particularly with civil society to identify skills that children need, can use, and training them. We have more than 160,000 children which we're reaching uh, through our um, vocational education programs in colleges throughout the country. But that's still a drop in the bucket. We need to do much more, and I believe the government needs to work to establish a, a very effective integrated vocational education system to ensure that children get skills and to eliminate uh, young child labour. Children aged 10, 12, 13, actually particularly mm -hmm. domestic workers. There yeah. are children as young as eight years of age doing 16 hours a day, sleeping on the floor. This has to stop. Yeah, uh, yeah domestic, not... uh, when violence against domestic help is also a very rising, yes. alarming situation in Bangladesh. If you live here in Dhaka, you can hear it when you, when you lean out your window at night. Yeah. Uh, Children are in a very vulnerable position. They're alone in an apartment, often cut off from their parents, yeah. uh, and sort of at the mercy of their employers. And it, there's no place for an eight-year-old child working in someone else's home. Um, they, there's no need for that whatsoever. Save the Children is in a small way trying to link parents. We have a national program called Link Up, which is now being rolled out throughout the country where we keep parents and uh, their Upazilla officials in touch with the child, yeah. so whenever a child moves. But really that's, that's a, um, a Band-Aid job. We need to stop the employment of these young children in domestic labour. But do you see a significant improvement in this, in this regard? I don't yet see significant improvement, but the government is considering making uh, domestic work come under the Labor Act. And we have probably one of our best working relationships is with the Ministry of Labor and Employment. We have a, a very strong secretary there, and I very much enjoy- You find them serious? Yes, I find them very serious. Uh, they've been quite successful in the wake of Rana Plaza. So I think if they turn their attention to this issue of child labor in the informal sector, we will see some success. And international community also ready to extend their support for this? I believe so. Uh, you probably, unfortunately, Bangladesh is known for its incidents of child labour. We'd like to stop that. We'd like to ensure that Bangladesh makes the same progress in this area and that nobody thinks of Bangladesh as a, a country that is afflicted by the scourge of child labour. My personal opinion um, uh, in terms of ensuring child rights in Bangladesh, uh, in many ways this, uh, the environment in Bangladesh is not that safe it's not that friendly, it's not that adequate. And um, Save the Children, along with other international organizations working with Bangladesh in, uh, and the partners in Bangladesh. So, I mean, uh, in terms of your strategic vision, your mm. programs you are taking or you are going to implement, or I mean, the, how efficiently the, I mean, uh, collective efforts are, 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 are putting forward to re reach all these goals you have set out to ensure a safe, a friendly, uh, ensuring a comfortable situation for the children in Bangladesh. Yes, it is, a, it is a huge challenge. I mean, we have 45 million children in Bangladesh. Uh, the good thing is that the seventh five-year plan is absolutely in line with the Sustainable Development Goals of the UN and that Save the Children's new strategy has been built on those two uh, pillars. Uh, so I think we are quite well integrated into the government's national development strategy. Uh, we are very much focused on ensuring that we reach the most vulnerable children. Um, it's not enough to reach 90% or 95%. Mm. There's still going to be tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of children in the worst situations. And these are children in remote parts of the country, 
children here in Dhaka, in, in the slums, yeah. where we're starting our programs, uh, we want to ensure that government policies and procedures are able to reach these worst off children. So in answer to your question, are we yet able to fully achieve our objectives? No. Um, we have a long way to go, but we have excellent partners in the government and the people of Bangladesh. Malawi, uh, Michael, you uh, very last question that you worked in Malawi, Armenia, Pakistan, uh, and also in Bangladesh mm -hmm. as country director. Now you are regional director uh, in charge of uh, Southern Central Asia. So in your view, do you think the Save the Children International is uh, putting enough um, assistance, I mean in terms of fun, mm -hmm. uh, to encounter or to confront the challenges in Bangladesh? Does it commensurate with the challenges in Bangladesh, the amount of fund we are receiving for this country? Well, um, this is the fourth largest country office in the world for, for uh, Save the Children. And the reason for that is partly the need. There is a desperate need here, but also the fact that we can achieve a huge amount. I was talking to someone in embassy and they said, we can spend a dollar or let's say a hundred dollars in another country in another part of the world and we'll get fifty dollars worth of value. We spend a hundred dollars in Bangladesh and we get a hundred and fifty dollars worth of value because people are very innovative, active and we do get good support from the government. Uh, are we doing enough? No, we're not doing enough, not yet, but it's the fourth largest program in the world. In my humble opinion, it's the best program in the world for Save the Children and I think we have the potential to achieve great things for the people of Bangladesh and particularly the children of Bangladesh. And hope Bangladesh will be receiving continuously your support and your attention. We've been here for 45 years since before independence and we certainly have no intention of leaving until the job is done. Thank you so much, Michael McGraw, for thank joining you. me on Frankly Speaking. Thank you very much, Zahir. My honor. Thank you so much. Dear viewers, we thank you indeed for watching this program. I will, we invite you to watch our next episode. Until then, do take care and goodbye.